Tim Ryan tried to make the case that it's time for change, the party needs to go in a different direction, particularly to communicate to the Rust Belt voters and states that uh, the Democrats struggled with uh, in the past elections. And he appeared uh, to have made some headway to the caucus by the fact that he did get 63 votes. Uh, still, Nancy Pelosi is re-elected as the House Democratic leader. The pressure is on, the leader on her, and to get back in. We've got to wait to get back to the House majority that they have not had since that 2010 election. She can figure out how to do that within two cycles. She can get a better chance, but still, something for her to pay attention to. Nancy Pelosi is a little bit more vulnerable than we are. Still breaking up. Yeah, at the end of my. Shoot the gaggles, okay? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, what, what do we take place before you sit down? Go ahead. I'm going to sit down. As long as you can get up. Okay. Okay. There's five doors to this place. Five. Five doors.
bleiben. a uh, wonderful vote in there for Nancy Pelosi and I couldn't be more pleased or proud.
first, uh, I'd like to thank these members who stood by me, uh, Marsha Fudge and Ed, Ed Perlmutter, who nominated me. Uh, you know, clearly this didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. We knew it was going to be an uphill battle. Uh, we only had a couple weeks to, to put this together, uh, but we, I think, did a, a pretty good job. My staff, uh, my members who came out publicly for me, and I think, quite frankly, we uh, got the message out that we wanted to get out, and that's that as Democrats we need to talk about uh, economics. It's the issue that unites us. Many of you have heard me say this uh, a million times in the last two weeks, and I believe it in my heart that if we're going to win as Democrats, we need to have an economic message that resonates in every corner of this country. Um, we come out of this uh, leadership election united as Democrats to take on the challenges that we that we need uh, moving forward. So, uh, you know, I'm disappointed because I like to win, and. Uh, but I think it was a great discussion for us, and I think, honestly, I think the party is better off. So I'm happy to take any questions. Mr. Ryan, Mr. Ryan. Congressman, Congressman, what, what message, Congressman, what message do you think it sends that about a third of the Democratic caucus voted for you? Uh, well, I think you all will speculate a lot about that, but I think it, it says that, you know, talking economics, pe people, I think, understood that uh, that message is very, very important to us as Democrats, um, especially leaders on the front lines and, you know, in some way representing the 30, 40, or 50 seats we're going to need to pick up. So I think the message resonated, and if you heard Marsha and Eddie nominate me, they talked about that, us being able to compete in every district in the United States um, with an agenda that resonates with the American Mr. people. Mr. Stan. Uh, I didn't ask anybody. I don't want to have my feelings hurt any more than they already were. Yeah. I, and I, let me just say, Speaker uh, Leader Pelosi has, has been here a long time. She has a lot of friends. This is her caucus, clearly. Um, but we had an opinion, and we wanted to make sure people heard it. Do you, you think the message is getting through to the leadership? You talked about a coastal party, in a sense. Do you think the message about the heartland is getting through to the leadership? To I think so. I think having a vote of 63 other members agreeing with the message, I would say that the um, leadership understands that there's a good many people in the caucus who want the message to move in that direction. Are you pathetic, sir, Ryan? Sorry? Do you agree that your, your effort was pathetic? <laughs> uh, yeah, not pathetic. I, I, I'm, I'm, proud, I'm proud of having 63 votes, I think. Chad. Talk to, I had one Democrat who supported you, who comes from a rural area, saying there is no greater divide now between the urban Democrats and the rural Democrats. And by electing Pelosi, even though you got 20 more votes than Dean Schumer did six years ago, that this doesn't address the problem. I mean, you, you launched the conversation, but as you said, you know, she can't go into certain districts and, and run. You can, other people can, but that's still the problem. That fundamentally doesn't alter. Well, we, we, we are going to compete. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we've got to figure out how to win. I tried to add to that conversation. Now we are a united caucus, and we're going to try to figure out how to win. And I, yeah. Before Tim continues, let me just say this, because I, I'm hearing the tone of this, and I really don't think it's very fair. We did not lose today. Today we won. We may not have won the position, but we won a caucus. We have now a leadership that listens to what we are saying. We have now a leadership that wants to be more inclusive and include more people from this caucus. We have now a leadership that wants to hear what we have to say, what we think went wrong, how we fix it. He didn't lose today. Today we made a caucus more responsible to its members. And so for that I congratulate him. One third of the members of this caucus had the courage to come out and say we needed a change. And I congratulate all of them. And for those who voted for our leader, I think that's great. I think she's a wonderful leader. But what I do know is when I go home, people are going to ask me, what did you do to make this better? Doing nothing doesn't make it better. But today, we won because they hear us. Mr. Mr. Ryan, Mr. Ryan, Mr. Ryan, you personally have confidence that Nancy Pelosi could bring this party back to the majority? Yes. You do. Why, why do you have confidence? Because we're going to work our butts off to make that happen. And it's not just Leader Pelosi. It's a team. And I think part of this campaign was to help energize a lot of people 
uh, that want to get out there and, and contribute. And I think they're the, I, I know walking out of that room today that we have a more energized caucus than we've had. We obviously have people who have a lot of courage to step up and to say to the leadership what Marsha just said and how important that is. So I think our prospects have improved just because of this conversation. As I said from the very beginning, you know, we're a family. And sometimes families have to have tough conversations. You can go back to the first couple interviews I did. And nobody wants to have them. We try to delay those conversations. We try to ignore them for days, weeks, months, and years sometimes. But every single time you have that conversation, that tough talk, you come out of there stronger. And whether it's a personal relationship or in a family event like this, and I think we come out of here stronger than we went in. Who is the future of the Democratic Party? Um, well, I, I, don't, I haven't thought about that, Casey. Is it Nancy Pelosi? Well, you, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, to some extent, we, this is our leader. This is who, this is who our caucus chose, and, and we're going to support them. Isn't the problem that Democrats have, in, this, in a nutshell? I mean, who's going to lead the party for the next four years? We're all going to participate in leading the party. I think now's the time where everybody's got to step up, which, again, was part of why I wanted to do it. You see this. This crew here, a lot of young members stepped up, went public, which is unheard of uh, in, in a political caucus like this for young people to stand up. So we got a lot of people uh, that are ready to participate. I'll take one more question. How do you connect with hard working class voters who voted for Donald Trump and for the leadership of San Francisco and New York? Well, we're going to have to figure that out. That's going to be part of what we got to figure out. And obviously, that was my case that I made. You know, I, you know, we didn't win the day today, but as Marcia said, there's a lot more people who are participating. I think that the conversation is shifting to a more economic uh, conversation, and I think that's going to help all of us, and that's going to help us be able to try to win the House back. Because yeah, yeah. All right, thanks. We got to get back and vote. jealous at this moment that I was earlier today. This was tugged on on to straightening it. Thank you.
it's within the family, and you know, I kept it totally respectful and above board, and I said many, many. Yeah, great. Uh huh. And you've also got, you know, you've got Ed, Ed O'Keefe and folks here. If you want me to, you know, if you want to do something later with somebody too. Okay, and we're still waiting for Pelosi to come out.